Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're working on this image right here. Uh, Daniel Charnitsky gave me another image to edit. This is from his Iceland series. This is a really cool image. This is a camera raw image right out of camera. It starts out looking like this and it's going to end up looking like this. So let me show you everything I've done to get it to this point. This is a pretty simple and easy edit. I'm using uh, Luminar 4, I'm using Topaz Studio 2, Topaz Adjust AI, Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, and even some Nick Collection thrown in at the end for good measure. So without any further ado, let's edit. In Lightroom, all I did was ran the auto on it and just tweaked it a little bit here. Uh, worked with the uh, white balance a little bit, and as far as details concerned, have the sharpening shut off. The noise reduction is shut off. And I've also uh, enabled uh, remove chromatic aberrations and enable uh, profile corrections. And I'll just show you. Here's the before Lightroom and here's the after. Next we're going to be in Photoshop. Here we are in Photoshop and I ran this into Topaz Denoise AI. Let me go ahead and zoom in here and I'll turn on the layer so you can see it so you can see the noise in there right and here's what it looks like after topaz denoise ai now i used that low light mode i added no sharpening to it because as you can see this image is definitely on the soft side and next i ran it into topaz sharpen ai let me zoom out a little bit here this is the before and here's the after now it definitely brought a lot of sharpness back now i did use the uh, stabilize mode to do that. I tried the focus mode first and it was, wasn't was bad but then I went with the stabilize mode and it was definitely a lot better. So try both and then just pick the one that you think looks the best out of the two. Next up I want to do a sky replacement. I'm going to use Luminar 4 for that because this is a really easy sky to replace and Luminar 4 will do a great job with it. I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate the Sharpen AI uh, stabilize layer. And we're going to go ahead and launch uh, Luminar 4 and we'll change out that sky. And also, I think I'll use some AI Enhance on this. Let's go ahead to the Creative tab here, open it up, and click on AI Sky Replacement. Now, I played around with some different skies in here. I started out with Blue Sky 1 and I thought, oh, that looks pretty good. And then I went down into the Dramatic Sunset and I thought, man, that's not so bad. And I just kept looking. And I'm just using a sky that's built in here. And you can also... Use your own skies if you have them. I went down to Sunset 1 right here, and I thought, oh, that looks pretty good. There's a little bit of gray right here. I don't know if you can see it right here. So what I did was I just took the horizon blending and just moved it a little bit to the right, and that, that fixed that right up. And then I went to uh, under Advanced Settings, Sky Defocus, and just bumped that to a 2 just to soften that up a little bit. And I thought the lighting and everything looked good. And after that, I went to the um, Essentials panel and a little bit of AI Enhance. Pulled the AI Accent slider up a little bit. Just to, you know, it does magical things, I think, to the image. It pulls out colors and tones and things like that. So I like that. I think right around there looks pretty good. And let's try a little bit of AI Sky Enhancer on it. Just a tiny little bit here. I think that's good. And all we have to do is click Apply and we'll send this back into Photoshop. I went ahead and renamed this layer Lightroom 4 Sky Replacement AI Enhance. Now here's the before and here's the after. So I'm really happy with this. And now I'm thinking, let's try Topaz Adjust AI just to see if it can do anything special to this image. So let's try that next. I duplicated the Luminar layer and called it Topaz Adjust AI. Now we're going to go ahead and launch Topaz Adjust AI. So I'm going to start out by clicking on Standard just to see what kind of results we get with Standard. And definitely a nice change there. Let's see the original. Here's the before and here's the after. So pretty nice. Might be a little over the top. I think I'll ease back on the uh, strength. But let's try the HDR style and see what we get there. I like to try everything out just to see if one's better than the other. And that's not bad either. But I think I like the standard better. So I'm going to go with the standard. And let's take the strength the whole way off. And I'm going to slowly build this up. And stop at a point where I think it looks nice. And I'm thinking maybe right there. Let's look at the before. There's the before and there's the after. A nice little change there and I think I'm happy with that. I'm not going to touch any of these other adjustments in here. I'm just going to click apply. Let's take a look at the before and after Topaz Adjust AI. So here's the before. 
That was with the sky replacement and a little bit of AI enhance. And here's after adjust AI. And if you think the adjustment's over the top, you can take the opacity and just pull it back to the point where you think it looks good. And I might just do that. Just take it back to around a 74. Here's the before and here's the after. I like experimenting with these two products together, AI Enhance and Topaz Adjust AI. Sometimes you can get some really nice results. I went ahead and duplicated my background layer and called it Topaz Studio 2 Precision Contrast because we're going to go into Topaz Studio 2 and we're going to add a little bit of precision contrast, but we're going to do it locally. We'll go ahead and get the precision contrast uh, filter right here. I'm just going to bump up the micro and the low a little bit here. I'm just looking to add contrast but also pop out a little bit of detail and that micro is going to be great for popping out detail and you can kind of see i have kind of an angle going on here and that's really all i'm doing with that now I'll just go up and click accept and that'll send us right back into photoshop i said i was going to add this locally and right now it's over the whole thing so let's just click this eye here's the before and here's the after but you can see that extra detail and contrast is put in there i'm just going to go ahead and put a uh, black hide all layer mask on here to hide it and now I'll get a paintbrush and just paint it in where I think I need it. I have a nice soft brush here and uh, I'm going to paint with white paint. If you have black paint, just type X and it'll change the white paint. And I'm just going to paint on the areas that I want to add some contrast to. I'm using 100% opacity and I'm thinking on these rocks, some of this foreground stuff in here. And maybe over in here, some of these rocks along the waterfall right here. Make sure I get this rock, and I'm going to come back to the to this area around the waterfall back here on these rocks back in here, and just pop some detail into here. This is a local adjustment, so it's just going to certain areas that I think will add some interest to this image. And I'll do a before and after, and you'll see what it's doing. Because areas of a detail is where your eyes are going to be drawn to, so I want to draw my viewer to those areas maybe right in here I'm going to stay off the waterfall itself make sure I get this one rock right in here maybe this rock make sure I got this rock okay let's see a before and after so here's a before and here's an after so see that it just draws your eye into those areas of interest I think I want to brighten up my midtones a little bit so I'm going to go ahead and get a uh, curves adjustment layer and just drop a point in the center of this curve and pull straight up and just lighten up the mid-tones a little bit. Let's go ahead and see. Here's a before and here's an after. So before and after. So I like that. I think that looks good. We're almost done with this image. The last thing I want to do is add a bit of a vignette to this image. And to do that, I'm going to use an older piece of software from the Nick Collection, Nick Color Effects Pro 4, and that is the Darken Light and Center filter. It's really cool. So that's next. Before I go ahead and launch Color Effects Pro 4, I wanted to explain something to you about plugins. Now, plugins are very interesting. You can only send a pixel layer into a plugin. Right now, you'll notice I have a curves adjustment layer. And if I come up here to my filters, all my filters are grayed out. So if you ever get that, that's because you're trying to send a non-pixel layer into a plugin. It, it can't happen, okay? What I would have to do would be to take all these layers here and stamp them into a pixel layer, and then I could send it into a plugin. I have the most recent update of the Nick collection by DxO. Now, if you recall, uh, Nick were bought out by uh, DxO from Google. Originally, they were Nick, then Google bought them out, and then DxO bought them out. But the nice thing about DxO, they have made a lot of nice changes to the software, not to the actual software itself, but the way the software interacts with, say, like Photoshop or Affinity Photo or whatever. It's just a much better piece of software when it's working with these different products as a plug-in, which is really nice. The cool thing they've added here, and I think this is an addition, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm going to go ahead and open up the uh, Nick Collection Selection tool right here. I'm going to open it up, and you'll see all my software inside of here. Now, see where it says Color Effects Pro 4? I'm going to open this up. And I believe before you could add your favorite filter. So anytime you have a favorite filter when you're in the Nick collection, if you star it, it'll show up in this list right here. I want to use Dark and Light and Center, and I saved it as a favorite. So what I'm going to do is just click it. I don't even have to stamp a layer. It'll automatically add that stamp layer, open up 
the Nick collection, which is pretty cool. I don't know of any other software that can do that. So let me go ahead and click Darken and Light and Center, and that'll open up the Nick collection with the Darken and Light and Center filter already open for us. This is a very easy uh, filter to use, and it's very effective. See right here where it says Play Center? Click on that and see the little uh, cursor there. Just give it a click in the center of the area that you want to highlight, which is the waterfall for me right here. Now you have two different shapes. Here's shape one, and you can see this, this shape right there, and I'll click on shape two, more of an oval shape. So I'm going to go with uh, shape one. I like that one. And then you have a center luminosity and a border luminosity, and they do exactly what they say they'll do. So border luminosity, I'll make the borders darker. See how the borders are getting darker? If I move it to the right, they get lighter. So you can lighten or darken. I'm generally going to do more of the darkening. If you double click them, they'll go back to the default setting. And that's pretty good right there. And then the center luminosity, this is really nice. You can take the center luminosity. And right now it's at 25%. So it's 25% lighter in the center. And, you know, I could set it back to zero if I didn't want to lighten the center, which is cool. But if I want that center a little bit lighter, which is a nice thing to do. And I think I'll take it up to the default setting, which is pretty nice. And then you also have a center size, so you can adjust this. You can make the center more narrower, or you can make it wider. So I'm going to set my center about this size right here. Now I'm going to click and hold the compare button down. Here's the before and here's the after. But isn't that nice? It just brings a nice little vignette drawing your attention into this waterfall here. And that's really cool. Now all I need to do is click OK. And that sends us right back into Photoshop. Let's go ahead and hide this Nick Collection Selective Tool. We'll just click on this little negative right here and that tucks it away right down here where it lives. And we can open it back up if we need it again. Dark and light and center. Let's look at the before. Here's the before and here's the after. A nice little touch. Now let's see where we've come from on this image. We started out of Lightroom with some basic adjustments. We came in and it looked like this. And now we look like this. Now a little bit of a recap. Uh, we added some Topaz Denoise AI onto this in the low light mode because this was a pretty high ISO image, ISO 2000. So that took care of our noise problem. This image was a little bit on the soft side. So we used Sharpen AI, Topaz Sharpen AI in the stabilized mode to bring back some sharpness that we would have never been able to get out of this image apart from Sharpen AI. Then we went into Luminar 4 and did a uh, sky replacement and, and used the uh, AI Enhance filter to just pop some details and color out of this image. And then after we brought it back in, we sent it into Topaz Adjust AI and I just added, uh, what did I add on here? Like 74% uh, of that Topaz Adjust AI in here. I like using uh, Topaz Adjust AI in conjunction with AI Enhance. Those two work well together, so give that a try. And then I added a little bit of precision contrast. I sent this into Topaz Studio 2, and I added local contrast to these areas back on these rocks back here and these foreground rocks, nothing on the waterfall, just the areas of interest that I wanted your eyes to go to. And then I just used the curves adjustment just to bring up the mid-tones a little bit to lighten up the mid-tones. And then I sent it into the Nick collection and did a darken and lighten center just to finish this image off. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. Hey, if you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.